Okay, Scott, what is the deal with this lampshade? You had a fit when you saw that lampshade. And please tell us about it. Okay, well, if you didn't see yesterday's video, you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at the clip when I find this lampshade in the Goodwill. Let's watch that now. Okay, now I asked everybody, why was I flipping out over this lampshade? Well, let's take a look at it. This lampshade is fantastic and they just don't survive in large numbers. Now they're out there, they're not rare, but they are hard to find. It's not made of cloth, it's not made of silk. There are no glass beads on it. What is it made out of? Well, it's in the style of Rembrandt lampshades. Have you heard of the Rembrandt Lamp Company? They made quality lamps for a very long time, and they were expensive lamps and well-made, and they were known for this type of shade. Now, that's not a Rembrandt shade, but it is, it is very similar to. Let's go take a look at some Rembrandt lamps and some Rembrandt shades. Now here we see some examples of some beautiful Rembrandt lamps and shades all dating to the 19 mid 20s into the mid 30s. They were very quality shades. They were expensive. You bought these in department stores and fine jewelry stores and such. And they were very well known for their uh, mica shades and the metal mesh shades. And I believe that Rembrandt shades and lamps are usually signed Rembrandt somewhere on the shade and the lamp. Okay, we're back. And now we can see that this looks very much like the Rembrandt shades. It's a large shade too big for a bridge lamp, but this would sit on a large table uh, lamp or a floor lamp. And the condition on it is phenomenal. It is in absolutely fantastic shape. And you say, okay, well, what is it made out of? Well, we've already discussed that a little bit. Let's zoom in on it. This is not ground glass. It's some type of a composite, some type of a synthetic something that's glued on there, sprayed on and glued on. But of course, this is metal. It's stamped metal. It almost looks like the screen on your old fashioned back door. Let's turn it upside down and look at it. And we can clearly see this is metal stamped out and very inexpensively put together. Now, uh, we can see it's all soldered here, so this is handwork. But this is the attempt, this is an attempt to be able to make lampshades at a uh, reasonable cost. Uh, remember, many of the lampshades of the 1920s and 30s, there was a lot of handwork that was involved. There was uh, a lot of stitching that was involved by hand and the beads and whatnot. But these metal pieces could be stamped out 
and all we needed to do in the factory was fit them down into these brass into sort of this brass frame and then solder it together and look at the detail this is this is quality detail that you see here there we go and you can see this is just like your back the screen on your back door the old metal screens I think there's some type of plastic now but they used to be metal remember that and that's what this lampshade is made out of and of course it's not made by the Rembrandt company uh, we're gonna see who made it and and uh, in just a second but there it is why don't they survive um, very easily well they rust if this is in somebody's basement or out in the garage or the barn or whatever it will rust there'll be surface rust on it these get bent out of shape and so to find one in this condition is amazing it's all original there's one little pinhole I think I showed you that when I was in the store but I absolutely was stunned when I saw it. I had one about five years ago, which I sold for about $250. The price has come down a little bit on these. Today, I would value this one at about maybe $150. Maybe a little bit more because of the condition. It's almost perfect. And uh, the... Uh, so it's almost perfect now the patent date on this is Gave me chills when I looked it up. This was patented the patent was granted on October the 29th 1929 that's the day the stock market crashed What a harbinger for bad luck, but that's right this shade granted the patent to the inventor October 29th, 1929. Isn't that fantastic? So we've got a shade. Uh, he, these shades were being made in the mid 20s, into the mid, into the early, early 1930s, and then they sort of fell out of fashion. Let's go out in the living room and see what it looks like on a lamp. Well, there she is in action. Now, of course. Uh, the light is on there. I'm going to walk over there and turn the light off so you can see. Um, but there it is. Pardon me. I got so excited I forgot to put the finial back on top of the lamp of the fixture. This is a stippled floor lamp which dates from the mid-20s to the mid-30s. And absolutely appropriate for a large shade like this. As I said, this shade is too large for a bridge lamp. Let me get back in focus here. Uh, but perfect on this nice large floor lamp, as we can see right here. Mm -hmm. Now, let me pull the chains. These, by the way, are also original, stippled, wooden uh, ornaments that hang from these pull chains. Uh, these just don't survive. Very rare to find a floor lamp with these still on it. And this is a two socket lamp. And, um, and that's what it is. Stippling was very popular. It was a very inexpensive way to decorate household items. And as I said, the late 20s uh, into the 30s was very popular. So there it is. We'll, t we'll turn the shade off. We'll turn the uh, lights off. And uh, you can see it takes on a very different effect when the uh, lamp is turned off. Mm-hmm. Let me completely back up so you can really get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, very appropriate for that lamp. It fits it perfectly, perfectly, and it looks just like 1930 in here, doesn't it? Okay. That's it. Now you can see why I was absolutely thrilled spitless when I found it. All right, let's go do something else. Okay, so what a fantastic find. Am I selling this one? No way. 
Now, the ones that have really a much higher value would have the Art Deco panels here. And so, but there's many variations with several different colors and styles. And so keep your eyes out. If you ever are out finding old lampshades and you find one made of metal, it's a good one. Let's move over here. Remember, I was at the silent auction uh, a little while ago, and I'm happy to say you can see I won. And there it is. That's the Indiana Classic glass. And that glass was made in the 1930s by the Indiana Glass Company, and they called this pattern or this line Modern Classic. And here we have the center bowl and the two candlesticks. This is a console set. And these would be on the dining room table or on the buffet in the dining room. And I was so excited. No chips, no cracks. We have one little spot of loss right there. This uh, is platinum on here. Uh, and this is paint that's painted on. And a lot of times they'll be lost to the paint. But we don't see any on this particular set. Uh, very Art Deco, great condition, and I was able to win this set for $38. It's not really worth a whole lot more than that, 50, 60 bucks maybe. Um, there was quite a bit of it produced by, uh, in, in the 1930s by Indiana, but uh, it fits into my uh, Art Deco collection, and so it is going nowhere. I was so happy that I was able to acquire this glass. And at the silent auction, they simply said Art Deco glass. They didn't identify it as uh, Indiana modern classic. Okay, there are the Hoosex lamps that I completely, completely rewired. And one of the things people love about the Hoosex glass is it will fluoresce under a black light. And so if you put uh, black light light bulbs up here and turn them on the, the bases of the lamps will fluoresce and here it is I've rewired them and this is the beautiful uh, rayon silk or silk covered reproduction cord and I've got some old-fashioned Bakelite plugs right here zoom in on them and uh, Listen, details matter, at least details matter to me. So we've got cords on there that are appropriate. What I've got right here, what I'd like to show you are some scraps. Now this is actual old 1920s and 30s uh, silk covered cords. And I want you to see, I don't know if the light is washing it out or not, but here's a dark brown color. And then this is sort of a champagne or platinum blonde color. And then uh, a gold color. I think these are both somewhat the uh, same color. Anyway, sometimes the cords were braided like this, twisted, and sometimes they were all they were wired uh, together so that there's still there's still a ground and a, a hot and a cold, so to speak. But it's uh, they're put together in one coat case of silk is what I'm trying to say. What am I trying to say? Anyway, so this is the cord that I've that I have used, and there we go. We'll pull one of the shades off to see. We've got nice old sockets on there, which uh, I was able to save. Those are the original sockets, and I'll just turn these on to give you idea of what they look like with um, all lit up there. They are boudoir lamps, or vanity lamps, dresser lamps, for the bedroom. And there's not a chip or a crack anywhere on this glass. I am going to sell them. I have decided, although I'm not ready to list them yet, and it will just be the lamps, not including the shades. Now, Hoosex, H-O-U-Z-E, that's the name, John Hoos. Uh, and his brothers came to this country from Belgium, I think, and they wound up in Pennsylvania, and they made glass for a very long time. They loved this green uh, caramelized slag glass, slag type of glass, 
with uranium in it, and they made everything. They made, um, obviously, lamps. They made um, cigarette lighters. They made um, bookends. Oh my goodness. You can find this type of glass uh, in the 1920s and 30s. They were hugely successful. Desk, uh, desk sets and everything. Little frames for clocks and whatnot. All kinds of stuff. And uh, they're really in good condition. And rewired, you know, with the new, with the uh, reproduction cord, they're ready to go. So as I said, give me a little bit of time. I might live with these for a couple of weeks before I decide to put those up for auction. By the way, while we're talking about Who's Glass, H-O-U-Z-E uh, again, Who's, not How's, but Who's. Let's go take a look at a large Who's Glass floor lamp I'd like to show you in the other room. Well, there it is, sitting there by the old floor model radio. And this is a bridge lamp. And of course, we have an authentic shade on there. This is actually a reproduction shade, but very typical of what would be on a bridge lamp in the 19, late 19, mid to late 1920s. Once you got into the 30s, those frames, really frames, um, those shades fell out of style. But what I really want you to see, uh, get myself turned around here, is the glass that we see. And this is all, again, this is that green caramelized glass you see here that will fluoresce under black light. And as we go all the way down, you can see there's quite a bit of it, quite a bit of it. Very Art Deco down here at the bottom. Move back up. Now, when you find these lamps, uh, the more glass, the better. Sometimes you'll find them and there's just one, one glass ball right in the center of the rod and that's it. This one is, they were very generous with the amount of uh, glass that they used in this particular lamp and that pushes the value up on it. I don't think I'm really standing where I need to be. And I have the lights turned off, get a little bit more light. I don't know if you can see a little bit better that way. But that's, um, now these floor lamps, uh, that lamp without the shade on it, that lamp would, you would see that priced in an antique shop anywhere from $150 to $250. You'll really see a wide range in prices, pretty wide range in prices. Uh, throwing that shade on there, that's a $200 reproduction silk shade on there. So that's really about a, oh, a $400 outfit right there, lamp and shade. But I'm not going to part with it. And I can tell you that I paid $60 for the lamp at my local Restore store. And one day I was at a flea market not too far from here. And I bought that shade for $15. You can go online and see the company that makes those reproduction shades. And I believe they sell those shades for around $200 to $250. Uh, they are very expensive indeed. So, Who's Glass, H-O-U-Z-E in green with uranium. I love that lamp. I hope you do too. Mm-hmm. Okay, everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.